go ahead and take a crack at Torch's second lock. This one, uh, I just noticed it's got a little bit of engraving on there. It says, Bit of Faultless Insecurity. Not bad. And we do have a key. Mummied quite differently than the other. Hopefully this one is not a four pin lock. That's a whole five pinner. And you can see on the top there, five. That's cheating though. I'm still going to feel because who knows what he did in there. Okay, let's try. I think I'm going to try the same pick I did last time. That seemed to work pretty good. And again, we got the tricks with the a very strong spring in three and some very weak springs. It's almost like you can't feel pin in one and two. I can feel the metallic touch, but other than that, they just lift right up to the top. But three takes quite an effort. Okay, top of the keyway. A lot more flop in this one than the other. I'll pick this one. May as well go clockwise. All right, very light touch. And I'm already hung up. Everything seized. All right, I'm going to go ahead and release tension, like no tension. Yeah, it's three. All right, that was three. It had to have no tension in order to even to begin to set. And now I'm on five, and I think he might be the same way because he's completely seized up. So let's, let's just experiment. Okay, that was four. That was three. I'm getting a little bit of counter rotation on two. Let me check around a little bit. Okay, that was two, I think. Okay, I'm getting a little paranoid here about the tension because I keep I've let everything off and now everything's falling back down. So I want to apply tension, but as soon as you do, everything kind of locks up. I feel like I got a little bit of a fault set, not a lot, but but everything is seized up in place. I'm getting no feedback. Okay, I'm gonna try pin. That's one, I think. A little bit of counter rotation on him. I'm basically forcing pins now. I mean, there's no feedback and there's no reason to pick it. It's just that that's completely bound. All right, let's try it counterclockwise, see if that makes a difference. Very light tension again. And again, three is bound right there. If I just release a little bit of tension, now three goes up. And that's a really powerful spring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, just a little bit and see what happens. See, if he, see where he grabs. I feel like I'm going to break the pick. Okay, that was pin one. And everybody else is seized up. What I'm doing now, <laughs> I am releasing the tension as I find a binder to see if he'll go. Okay, that was three. I'm on four. All right, I think we got a system here. And there we go. I got a deep fault set, 
And since we know one is probably a T-pin because he acted funny a while ago, let's just check him. And I think he's okay. No idea, guys. I'm going to release a little tension and uh, pick one. Maybe. He doesn't want to pick. All right. And the other bound one is five. Let's try that one. Oh, there we go. It was five. All right. So we had two binders. I tried one. That wasn't working for me because it, was, it felt like something was going to drop. So I tried five when I released tension. Uh, I guess it made room for him to go up. So let's see what we got in here in this bit of insecurity. Oh, my God. Not another one of these friggin' C clips. All right. Let's, the tool should fit on this one. Because there's no, well, I said it would. Yeah. Why does everybody have to use non-standard stuff? All right, I'm going to lock this one. We do have a key. And we're going to, that way we won't forget. So this way, maybe I can pry this off a little bit easier than we did last time, which was not so easy because this clip is super powerful. I think it's just, there we go. That one wasn't nearly the nightmare of the last one, that's for sure. All right, let me get this crap out of here. Get a pinning grid. Now we gotta look at the key. All right. This is a rather serious, he, he put some tape into that. I wonder, yeah, bypass, ugh. Oh my god. Oh, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I feel lucky to have gotten it. That's what I ought to be saying. All right, well, let's see if the key even works. Okay, it does work. I wasn't sure we we're going to get it in there, but we did. All right, we need that same follower as before. And I happen to have him handy right there. Nope, he's not going to work for us. How about this guy? That will work for us. Okay, uh, same type of core. And, you know, I don't know if that was practice or not. Just look at the tail piece there. Some, that almost looks like he practiced counter milling. But, let's see if we got it in the lock itself. Homemade. Uh, standard. This is a homemade, four is standard, and five is standard. Nothing spectacular there. I don't see anything threading in there either. Thank God. It's hard enough. I feel lucky to have gotten it. I'm sure luck played a very large part in that because it was touch and go there for a couple of on those pins, especially on the last one. I had no idea. All right, let's see what we got inside here. All right, there is a pin in there, but he is lying flush. Actually, he's below grade a little bit, and that tells me that that spring is tiny, tiny, and it's probably too short for this lock. It is. There he is. Tiny little spring. And a standard driver. Okay, next, again, a tiny little spring under that one, too, probably, because look how he just barely protrudes above the shear line. And that's a nasty-looking little devil. And the spring... There is no spring. If there's a spring, he's down inside of there. And he's not coming out. It must be a little bitty, um, we'll, we'll bang it later. I don't want to bang it with pins still in there. Who knows what will happen. I already screwed things up bad enough without 
Bang. Okay, next one looks like a T-pin. You can see them just sticking against the edge of the follower there. And again, a really nasty looking pin. Very precise. Nice clean cuts on those. Very sharp edges. Okay, the next one... Uh, my follower is all the way off of him. He is barely, barely sticking up there. Let me pull out a little further. Ah, fell out the back. It's nothing but a standard though. It's a standard. And the last one. Again, another one is really nasty. Look at things narrower than the pin itself. So this is like a serrated T-pin. I don't think I've ever seen one of those before. Um, yeah, nothing too special about that. This is... Come here, you. This is odd. That is a really long pin. I don't think I've ever seen one quite that long before. And number three is the same way. Well, I'm dumping pins here, but here is another one of these baby pins. So here's a very powerful one. Nope. That's not him. Okay, we are still missing a spring. I don't know if he's stuck in there. Or he was totally missing. I'm thinking he's totally missing, guys. So one of these was springless. Here's what we're looking at. I, I don't know on those last two for sure which went into which, but here's what we're looking at. And I just noticed this guy, too. He's See, that's what I thought pin one was. This is a pin that separates. It fits inside of there like that. I thought pin one looked kind of like that. That's why I gave him a little pull. And then I looked down and saw him starting to come apart. So it's a two-piece pin. So there's one of those in there. What a nasty-looking lock. And what a nasty looking bidding. Alright Torch, you did a great job, I gotta say, especially using something like a quick set clone as your foundation. Uh, if you had threaded this, if you had threaded one or two of these, or maybe counter milled them, I think I'd still be fighting this devil. Anyway, thanks for your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.